everybody and welcome to On The Roof. Today we have a wonderful guest, an artist. We're up in Rhinebeck, New York with Betsy Jackarusso at the Betsy Jackarusso Gallery. So welcome Betsy. Thanks Scott. It's Good so to be nice with to you. be here. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about you and who you are. Well, uh, I'm, I'm an artist. Um, been painting for a long time. I always had a hard time talking about myself, actually. Uh, I had a hard time with words, um, and I found painting was a way uh, for me to express myself and, and release some of what was inside, and it was also a way for me to understand what was happening, um, how I was feeling and responding to life and its challenges. So it was a, it was a real release for me painting and observing also um, other, other people and their lives and the complexities of relationships, et cetera. So how much of a percentage uh, would you say being an artist is of the definition of you? Well, I guess they always wanna say, you, know, you, you don't wanna identify yourself uh, just by your art but um, yeah, I have a hard time imagining me without my art. Uh, so it is, it, it's always an aspect of yourself, uh, how you view the world. It's, it's a lens that you view, view the world from. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a way that I can communicate right. my response to the world. Right. How important was it for you to find that outlet? Well, I feel like initially, uh, when I was younger, it was very important. Um, I probably didn't realize uh, how much trauma I um, was kind of holding. Uh, just difficulties in, difficulties in early childhood, so mm -hmm. um, I discovered a lot about myself uh, in art school when I went to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Um, I discovered a lot about myself when I had to do a self-portrait or um, something a little deeper, more meaningful. I, I, I learned a lot about myself actually through my own work, I think. Obviously, this is your form of expression, but you also have the training, the, a, a classical training in it. How important was that for you then to be able to give you like a foundation to be able to express yourself clearly? Very important. Um, as a matter of fact, at Pratt, your first year was called your foundation year. So you, you, know, you studied drawing, um, color, form, uh, a, lot, a lot of basics. Um, and of course, every teacher was different and so you explored a lot of different things also in art school uh, so not just the technical foundation part of it right. but also then uh, exploring different uh, methods of painting working sculpture um, and it I think going to art school uh, the biggest part for me was giving myself that time and space to just create and paint. Mm. And it it's, um, helps with the evolution of finding out what you want to say with your work and how you want to say it, what medium right. uh, or mediums call to you, et cetera. Uh, did that accelerate your development as an artist? Yes, it, it's funny because I think um, there was a certain amount of uh, teaching of the technique, but the, um, a lot of the teachers I had at Pratt also really wanted you to explore and discover. So sometimes it's um, not really about technique. Once you get the basics, 
Uh, you want to let the artist, I think, evolve and discover. Isn't that like doing it in a safety zone so you know you're not just going off on some tangent that, you know, might just be time consuming, whereas somebody's letting you letting you explore, but within the confines of direction. With some with some guidance for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. With some guidance. I mean you're you're always gonna be somewhat inspired by um, the individual instructor and what calls what what inspires them because they're sharing with you right um, I had a teacher Franklin Faust one of my favorites uh, and he was a lot about color and he was just amazing but in that he would set up these amazing still life and also setups with models that were just uh, awe-inspiring and uh, all about color he was a real colorist so I learned a lot from him so you are influenced by what your teachers bring to you. Uh, at the same time, you'll always see how every student uh, is different. Every artist expresses themselves differently, no matter what those uh, yeah. confines are. You knew that this was a, a significant part of you way before college, right? Did you already feel like an artist already? Now you're just kind of honing your craft? more or were you just like let's start with a clean slate and just see what they got to offer no I want I, I had a lot left to learn you know being kind of self-taught uh, when you're younger we didn't have a lot of art classes we did have some but mainly when I discovered uh, that I had talent was when we'd have to do uh, projects say for science class right. and it was often for science class we'd have to do diagrams and things and those were always the uh, assignments I'd get A's on um, wow. And so, and being an insecure kid at that time, um, art also helped to give me some validation. Self, yeah, validation and self confidence. Yeah. So, you know, then being able to go to art school, I actually started out uh, studying languages because everyone said you couldn't make a living in the arts. Right. Uh, so I didn't go to art school, even though it was my first love. I still loved French, I loved Spanish, right. I loved learning about other cultures. And um, in my studies abroad, I, I, I remember finding this master drawing teacher and I took drawing classes. Um, when um, my, the first time I went to college, uh, even though I was studying Spanish, I kept taking art classes on the side. So it took me an extra year to graduate. So then when I finally did go back to school for art, I was really um, just loving it. Cause that's, yeah. you know. You were more mature at that point where you knew why you were there. You weren't just going through the motions. You had a purpose. Yes, and yeah. I, I felt I had a little more freedom, maturity to have freedom to, to take right. that on. Right. Having said that, <laughs> I did end up spending a good many years waitressing and uh, in, in retail and doing what I could. <laughs> that's the most common thread in being an artist. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate, but that's the way that goes sometimes. You have to really You have, have to a find out how to... Eat. How to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that willingness to, to do that is really that it reaffirms your commitment to see it all the way through, right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, when I became a single parent, I, I had, the, it was a few years before that where I, I hadn't painted. And that was kind of a painful time. It was something like missing in my life. Um, and I did have a teacher, I'll never forget, uh, at Pratt who said, if you really want to be a successful artist, don't get married, don't have kids. <laughs> and of course, I, I broke the rules, uh, so it probably took me longer to really get grounded with my art so that I was doing it full time. Um, but uh, I got back into watercolor. We'd done a little bit in art school, but as a single parent, I got into watercolor because I could sit at the coffee table, get set up, not worry about you know toxic fumes or anything uh it was fairly easy cleanup I and it was you know it was great every time somebody had said to me before that well have you been painting i'd get this lump in my throat uh obviously i'd been longing to do it and it was a, yeah. a big part of me that was missing for those few years i just want to jump back again to the the educational process of going to school and how important is it as an artist for you to have that teacher that that you 
you're in, in sync with, like, you know, you, you're being heard, you're being seen, you're being acknowledged, and you have that energy there that, you know, that enthusiasm with the connection. How important is that when, for an artist, for you? I think it's very important. Um, it's, you're, you're, um, you're being challenged by them, and hopefully it's a, a teacher that you re can respect because it's easier to take some criticism and uh, delve deeper right. and strive a bit harder. Um, but it, it's really important, uh, especially in the arts, because once you're out there in the world, it, it's harder to find that support. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably followed through to, um, in my teaching, uh, I always felt like there were two things that sometimes were missing with, with some instructors. One was sometimes not giving you enough tangible information, like the foundation stuff, uh, and the other was um, positive support. Criticism is, is fine, critiquing is always important, yep. but also I found focusing on what's working also for the artist to help them discover the direction they want to move in, because if it's only about the criticism, it doesn't give them right. uh, uh, an avenue where to move toward. So in my teaching, I really try to inspire that kind of encouragement, finding what's working for them um, and what's great, even, even though there's right. some things that might not be. Sure. Um, so I, th I think that, yeah, an instructor can be really important to keep an artist feeling positive so they mm -hmm. can keep painting. I'm curious because you, you mentioned a trauma and not having being heard. Would you respond better to a teacher that is going to push you to your limits or like or push you out of your comfort zone? I mean, some people they, they just that that's not going to work with them. Other people really need that because you know. And sometimes uh, a coach, a teacher, uh, somebody in your life, uh, some kind of mentor, has the ability to reach you that way, to see more in you than you even see in yourself and can push you there. And without that push, you know, it might just be uncharted waters forever, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a good question, because I think that I always, um, I liked being challenged. And I think what would make the difference is if that teacher, if you felt the integrity from them. Right. That there, there's always a couple of uh, instructors you might find um, who um, just find it really easy to criticize, but if the integrity isn't behind it, and you're really not behind yeah. the student, right? In a, in a, and you can you can tell the difference. Is that just the trust? I think it's trust, and I think it's the intention of the instructor. If they have baggage, yeah. <laughs> where they have this need to just yeah. criticize, and that's right. all you're getting, right? Then there's something missing. Right. I remember um, another one of my prof professors at Pratt uh, ev was Dick Hall. Everybody said, you know, when you were signing up for classes, and this, he was one of the foundation teachers, whatever you do, don't get Dick Hall. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I ended up getting him, so I was panicked. Uh, and he was hard, but I learned a lot. And um, Was that like getting thrown right into the fire? Yes, but you know, he, he gave us tangible problems to solve. Yeah. And he made us work hard and think about it. And he was hard, but somehow you knew it, he wanted to give you, um, he was pushing you to, yeah. to do your best and, right. and, and to be a success. So I learned a lot from him. As an artist, to be able to uh, express yourself that way you know, when, again, you mentioned trauma, so like a lot of times that can go either way on how you become comfortable and free enough to just be really honest. You can express it, but you're still holding back maybe, or you just, and then you just, you know, it's difficult, that process alone is difficult to find your own sense of being able to trust yourself in that state of vulnerability. Did you ever find in your process that breakthrough moment where it was just like, okay, man, I'm good now. Like I got, I, you crossed that line into like, it, it's almost like you don't care anymore. Like That's I don't so care funny, about man. your judgment anymore. 
Like I found myself, I'm cool. And I have to say no. <laughs> really? Actually, there were periods, there are periods. Um, there were periods, yeah, maybe where I thought that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as an artist, it's, it's, it's always a ride. It's like a voyage that's always changing. You go back to the darkness. So yeah, you, you, you can write, oh, I'm good now. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm in a maybe a period where I'm onto something and I'm expressing it and I'm able to really express myself mm -hmm. and create what I'm, what a, something satisfying that I'm able to communicate. Right. And, but when you do that, sometimes you'll reach a plateau and I feel like you can't just keep saying the same thing. There's got to be a shift and then you find another, uh, you know, uh, some of my earliest work that I felt was successful and uh, was, well, one was the, my father-daughter theme, which um, I painted a lot for a while and I think it right. was, I was really discovering um, and understanding a lot of the trauma in my relationship with my dad. Um, and, um, and always looking for deeper meaning through that process. Um, and, and also looking for some relief from it, for some uh, resolve. Right. Uh, so right. without the resolve, um, I, I could keep at it for quite a while. Yeah. Um, I eventually did have some shift with, in my relationship with my dad. It was a, a, a very tough um, beginning with him, and uh, my parents did d divorce, um, but the early trauma was, um, you know, something that stays with you. But I, I ended up having a good relationship with my dad, um, but I think the shift started maybe when he was almost 80, probably about 80. <laughs> so I, I feel really fortunate that I was able to get through that and, and have a shift. Yeah. So, so for me, that was like a miracle because I, I didn't think it was gonna happen, but um, it did. And my dad was an artist, so that made it really important for me. Yeah. Um, we had that connection. And, but there was a point when I felt I was um, free, free from all that uh, from the, from the your emotional own personal grip that bondage it had on in that me. situation. Exactly. Right. Once I felt more free with it, yeah. um, I had to think of something else to, to say <laughs> besides those, those, those feelings. Um, so, and that can be hard because, yeah. you know, it's tempting to just keep But is it just another test the on your ability to express? Like, okay, this was your toughest issue. You got through it. You, you know, you were able to come to terms with it. Now you had a, res a resolution, some level of resolve. Now you got to well, do something else. And now it's another, like, start over Well, it's again. like I wanted to say something Fresh different cast. now. I, had, I yeah. had a different outlook on, on life. So what did you say? What was, do you remember where you were, like, after you had come in out of that phase with the uh, father-daughter um, um, series? Well, I think I, initially, um, I, at that time, I probably painted a lot of botanical things, and I would still paint people. I loved painting people, and um, I think expressing the emotions that that we feel and that we experience. Mm -hmm. And I think I was still doing that through my through the botanicals. That's interesting because to be so personal and vulnerable, and this is the first father-daughter painting that we're sitting between. That was maybe the third one. The third one, right? <laughs> right. But that process that you went through was probably the game changer for you. So to come out of that and then like not go near like that personal vulnerability thing, or I'm, I'm assuming that because I'm just thinking like botanically, you mean plants, flowers, things like this, right? Still life. Isn't that Again, I'm asking, I'm completely naive to, to this whole thing, but what are you saying? Ultimately, like now in retrospect, what were you saying then? Well, I think it was, um, you know, my, my outlook on life changed when I was freed up from that. And, um, but I still related to um, our experiences and our, our human uh, 
response to life and experiences. And, um, and one of the things that um, I think I always connected with is nature. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it a real respite in nature uh, and an inspiration always. Um, and I would find emotions in the moodiness of, of uh, you know, a, a foggy day or... Um, right. So I would, I think I would, I would be drawn to certain scenes uh, because of the feeling that it would it evoke. In you, right. And right. with botanicals, uh, you know, for a while they're almost like portraits expressing all those emotions. I feel like, I feel like they're so expressive. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I would arrange them. I would take a lot of time sometimes arranging a still life or a, a portrait of a flower. Um, and choosing that one flower sometimes because of its expressive quality as that I wanted to connect with flower. as a painter. Right? Yes. Yeah. So do you think that's what you were kind of born to do and you were being haunted by uh, issues? So now that you were freed up, like now is like you, you get a vibrance in what you're doing. Like now, you, now I can pay attention to the colors and to this and to that where I'm not being driven by something else back there? I think I'm always being driven by uh, even, even painting landscapes, which is what I've lately I've been mostly painting atmospheric um, landscapes and light. Right. Um, but I, it's still connected to emotion. I just feel like I'm, I'm a little freer to um, express a more a broad, right, a broad uh, spectrum of emotions through landscape. Right. It's important too. I think that every message that somebody's putting out there doesn't have to be driven by pain and trauma. You're allowed to just be good, like feel great, or be able to appreciate things on a level that's not driven by negativity. Right. Right. And that's important. That's yeah. You might respond to just this explosion of, of colors. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, so. Yeah, I find it very interesting in individuals' need to express themselves and then how they choose to do that. You know, that's why I, I was really anxious to do this with you. When we talked the last time, though, we, we spent a lot of time talking about this father-daughter series you did. So I, I know the significance in your journey of that. Looking back now, like, what is the greatest takeaway you have from that period of your life? Like, getting, going through those feelings and emotions and learning how to express them in a way you were comfortable with? Um, I feel like the importance of, of art, uh, actually. How important it is, um, like music or poetry, I feel like it's all music. And it's always expressing the human, uh, our, our human experience, whether it's tragedy or joy or, um, uh, so I think the, as the artist, um, you know, your job is to express yourself and hope that, um, other people can connect and get something from it. Uh, it's a way of, it's really a way, again, of communicating and connecting people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's so important. There's so much, uh, there's often just so much um, contrast and uh, challenge in life and in relationships and people getting along and diversity. Yeah. It's a good thing, but there's so much commonality we can find in some of the basic human feeling. Um, and I think that even in, with you know, some of the difficult things, the suffering that humans uh, survive, having a commonality or being able to um, connect with someone else over a similar yeah. 
similar feelings, I think helps to bring us together. Yeah, I, I think communication. I mean, I had such a relationship with my dad. It was at, at times just tumultuous, you know, just clashing, you know, all the time. Um, with all the work I've done and a, a, a shift in perspective, I can see things differently now. But I really think ultimately it really comes down to that ability to communicate. That is like, that, that's my big thing right now because I really think if we had that, everything's different, completely yeah. different. I, I don't question his love for me or how much he cared, you know, for my well being and wanted to provide the best. That's not in question. But as a kid, I didn't always see it that way. And believe, I didn't just question it. <laughs> you know, I rebelled and uh, self destructed whatever it took to be seen and to be heard uh, on my on my terms you know what I mean so right. it, it doesn't take much for that dial to be turned a little bit and everything goes awry and if it keeps going it, you're way off track and it doesn't matter sometimes um, it's really simple fix the willingness to you know open up to different ways to communicate and without that, it's really difficult yeah. a lot. I mean, I think like a lot of us, we have the same stories, just all the details are different. But if you break it all the way down to its core, it's we all want to be heard, we all want to be recognized, we all want to be loved. And sometimes we don't go about it the right way, but when you can communicate, you can fix. Right. You can redirect, readjust, and things can get in, in the right direction. Without that, it's just like there's so many broken relationships that never get mended because of this. So I just think communication is so important and that's your, your ability to express yourself that way. And I, did, I mean, isn't your takeaway what you, based on what you just said, you see a greater value in the, in the ability to communicate. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's invaluable. Yeah, and over the generations, uh, you know, some of the earlier generations were, they were Stuck. taught survival was- And taught you don't be vulnerable. You right. never expose vulnerability. Right. So very ever hard show for them. fear. And some of it's them just want you to have it's it together rap. because life was hard for them. I commend you. I, I am in awe of anyone who finds their ability to express. And I, I sometimes I think we have to go through some level of getting broken down in order to just be able to say, you know what? Fuck it, this is the truth. I'm just I'm I'm tired of being who you want me to be. I mean you know what I mean? Sometimes yep. we have to be, especially if we're conditioned. Tired of, yeah, tired of holding it in. Oh my God. Uh, I was just so afraid, for example, with it's my exhausting. dad to be honest about what I remembered. Yeah. And um, and finally, it did take just some honesty. Yeah. Of, you know, let's deal with it finally after all these years. And um, yeah, and it was met with resistance, but eventually, um, he wanted to talk about it, and it was freeing for him too. So, yeah. So, yeah. So once I had that kind of resolve, there was freedom for both of us. So I was free to uh, paint some other things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. How has that experience altered your relationships outside of that relationship? Like, you know, your child, your friends, your family. Like, with all the other relationships now that you've learned so much from this uh let's see i think um well relationships are so important but um i knew that um getting rid of the fear has been a challenge for me um and i guess i've had an, an opportunity with my other relationships to try to take them on without letting fear get in the way so much. Um, being able to be a little more honest and um, being myself. Uh, I think, and I think my, being able to express myself through my art has always helped to give me more confidence uh, in general. Yeah, and again, expressing yourself through, through your work is um, very therapeutic. Yeah. And, and, and that's just very freeing so that you don't carry on that baggage into your next right. relationships. Right. Um, so in, in a sense, it's an opportunity to teach, to be taught, to learn, and then you don't have to pass that on. Right. Right. 
I did an interview with a, a writer. This guy is, um, I don't even know how to describe him. He's, he's a, a dear friend, but he wrote a memoir that ends when he's six. Like his earliest recollection of sight to six, that's his, because it's so filled with deep rooted trauma. I mean, so vicious, so vile. How he made it is amazing. And he got tortured and it was like really heavy stuff. Uh, an Irish guy from Philly. And the house that all of this happened in, he wound up, he got so, he was like bare knuckle fighting in alleys that like, you know, wow. drunk, drinking at six, drinking and, and wow. smoking cigarettes at six. I'm just like, <laughs> I had a rough patch, but not at six. No. <laughs> you know, uh, so he wound up buying the house that he got all this trauma, that he was traumatized in and raising his family in this house. And, and, and part of that whole thing was deliberate to break to that shift chain. shift the energy. Yes, 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 shift the energy. I just thought like, wow, that's really, really profound. You know? Yeah. It's heavy. To not, not stay a victim. Not and he's such a, a brilliant writer. I mean, brilliant. Wow. And this guy's from the street, and he's brilliant. His stuff is incredible. And uh, I think, like, again, we talked about the same thing. Just being, going, having, going through, like, who cares what you think of me at this point? Like, if you, <laughs> if you could walk through my shoes, I might care. Right. But you, you know <laughs> Nothing what I mean? to it's, lose. <laughs> no. no it, but it's th that part of it's unfortunate, but I'm just in awe. Of, of somebody that can make it through that and still have like a willingness to serve, you know, like a kindness to them, you know? You're supposed to just be bitter at, at everything and everyone at that point when the people closest to you are treating you in that so manner. So inspiring I mean, to, oh my to God. see that. And Some people are, are not capable of, I, I don't, you know, I, everybody's so different. But um, I think he's but, an exception to the rule, like life, like. And it's a great example for It's tremendous. Yeah. Do have a hard time. Yeah. But I, I just like, I say like this, there's, there's tough and then there's like, you know, really <laughs> tough. Like it's the ability to overcome anything. But, but on top of that, then to be expressive and to be like soft and vulnerable and gentle and kind. I mean, this is like, you're supposed to be in prison, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and just, I think, hanging on to your sanity. You yeah. know, I mean, I remember a point where I'm almost, I don't want to get into the, to the, to the story, but I remember uh, concentrating really hard, feeling like my mind had to crack, <laughs> um, that I needed that escape from reality and yep. didn't know if I could hang on. Sure. Um, and I did, and uh, it was, but, um, you know, you don't know what everybody's threshold is right. for trauma, and, and right. we're all so different. Um, so, but someone with a story like, like your friend is uh, always inspiring yeah. for, for, for anyone who, who needs it. Right. But you, you know something, as I say that and I'm talking to you, I, I don't, as much as I have so much admiration and respect and for him, no less than, I, I told you about Tao, who was that, that yoga teacher that was, you know, I used to just go and spend time with her just to just have lunch. Because I, again, I mean, a woman who lived her life and feared nothing, not death, right. but, you know, I re you know when I actually, it was really awkward and I really felt like an idiot when I asked a question, but I said to her, where do you think you go? Like, when you pass on? And, and I, she was like 100 when I asked her that. It's just like, I, I couldn't stop myself from asking a question because I'm intrigued. Well, those are the kind of people you want to ask. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, but then when I did it, I was like, because her reaction was just like, she just got stoic. And uh, what she just looked she at me. Say? She goes, I don't think about that. I worry about living. Oh, wow. I was like, yeah. I mean, objective, I'm looking from the outside, I'm thinking like, why does she, you know, she's staying focused on like, how do I make a difference every day? How do I stay on point? And that was her message. Don't procrastinate and don't dream big and, and act on, you know, like go for it. 
and her, her thing was yoga, but it was just, it's not different than what you do. It's the same thing. I just, it was an unrelenting desire to never give in in a gentle way. So this guy might have been vicious and, and she might have been gentle. It's the same, again, it, you break it down, it's the same thing that's, the common denominator is the same. Right. It's just the approach, we're all different and unique in our, our own way, in a sense. But it, there's something about people's zest to just keep going and find what, and sometimes we're not even aware of our own ability to do that and recognize that, and sometimes it takes adversity for us to see that. You yeah, know? and keep and keep on going, but also improve uh, the challenge of life here on Earth. Right. Because that's the... Right. That's the hard part. Do you think Not in your afterwards. experience, learning as much as you've learned from living your life all the way through, has made you, like, you're a teacher and you, you, you have students. So your bond, like we talked earlier about being the student and finding that right teacher, you being that right teacher, being able to relate by having a broader experience and being able to see things as clear as you do, it might be harder to just dismiss somebody that you're just not in complete sync with you're more open to say, you know what, get on the same page a little bit and bond with that person, you know, because of, you know, your experience. Well, I think, yeah, I think each um, artist has to find um, a teacher that, that inspires them. So there's always like finding that right fit. Right. But, um, uh, you know, I feel like I'm just a facilitator um, mm -hmm. to, I just know what I get out of uh, being able to express myself um, through painting. Um, and there's, um, it really feeds the soul. I right. mean, it's um, even getting through the pandemic, it was, I, I, I so realized as I was doing my Zoom classes uh, thankfully, we were able to shift to that. But yeah. I think some of the students, um, and as well as myself, found it as a real respite. It was um, a med it's meditative. If you can get yourself in a zone, so to get yourself to a point where you're comfortable enough with your medium, right? Um, you know, every painting's a challenge, but you can sink into that zone, and it's therapeutic. It frees the mind. Yeah. It uh, feeds the soul, and it's also something that you can share and connect with. It's a yep. you know starting a conversation. Um, that also has me thinking too about. Um, I, I really enjoy sharing with students and um, finding what's working in their work, what might be exciting about it. Every everybody's going to express themselves differently mm -hmm. and it's important i think to have them feel comfortable enough in the process to figure out what is their um, form of expression with right. that medium but uh, having said that the other important part is when you're finished painting um, it's not it's not the end of the story you are um, I always feel like the last step in the painting process is sharing the work and having it be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the reason to paint it, but um, it's a form of communication. Um, I think that music and art all has in common that's so important to unite us. Do you, do you find yourself most at peace when you're either creating a work or teaching or in your process in some form? Yes, yeah, so I would say there are periods sometimes in the painting process where I might be very frustrated also. Um, you know, because sometimes it's a challenge to try and create what you're trying to, to say. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, that process is also important too, to have some challenge. Sure. If it were easy, we probably wouldn't want to do it. Right. Um, but. You know, I will have to remind my students of that sometimes too. It's if it were easy, you probably wouldn't want to bother. So some of the some of the joy you get is is being in the process and taking on the challenge, and see what comes out of it. And 
every painting doesn't have to be a masterpiece because yeah. sometimes the process is doing a few paintings uh, till you get what you're after. Right. But it's um, very satisfying. Do you consider it spiritual for you personally? Um, for me personally, yes. I, I feel very grounded. I feel uh, more connected uh, with my higher self, my better self, right. or whatever. Um, it gives me, I think, a better perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's satisfying enough. Uh, I find peace in it, and um, therefore I can go out uh, and deal with the other the, issues in life. The rest of your life. <laughs> I think with yeah. uh, a lot more peace of mind. Right. Have you ever had that student or students that you just see so much more in them than they see in themselves? Oh, I think I probably see that in almost every student. Really? <laughs> really? Well, I don't know. I think when people are starting out, um, some of my students, well, right now I'm teaching watercolor. I've been teaching watercolor for a while. Mm -hmm. Watercolor is a very challenging medium. It's not forgiving, but once you get comfortable with it, you can work with those uh, unexpected things, surprises, and you want to be able to have enough control to say what you want. But um, there's often the naivete of the beginner that uh, something in their painting sometimes that I find quite beautiful. Um, there's an honesty about it and a di directness. Because uh, often students will come in and they, they have this image, they want to paint a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that's not always what comes out of us. Right. And um, it's also the advantage of painting in a uh, mixed level class in a way. Um, because you can be inspired by, you can see so many different ways of doing it. Uh, everybody's outcome is going to be a little different, and it can be fascinating to see um, different approaches and free the beginning artist up for, oh, it, it could look this way and look really beautiful and exciting too. So you're not as, you don't feel like you're in this box and you, right. it has to look a certain They're way. They're limiting themselves by, and, and, and that when you see that, you can just kind of open that door for them. Right, so I see exciting things in some of these beginning paintings. Uh, even if they're not able to put the whole thing together really well, yeah. it's, um, you know, I guess learning to get comfortable just being in the process and enjoying that. Uh, and then, you know, you'll have some paintings that come out great, but uh, not worrying so much about we, what we look like is yeah. so important, I think. You don't know how many times I've had somebody walk in the door and be so inspired they really want to paint and they'll say but I have no talent yeah so I can't paint can I <laughs> right and it's that's what it stops so many people um, whether you become a great artist or not right anybody can get to the point if you're inspired enough get to the point where you can um, paint or take whatever that medium is on right and and enjoy it and get better at it right um, you know they don't tell you in school um, well you're not good in math so you can't take math you're gonna take math <laughs> one way or the other right. you may not be great at it but even if it's something that you're not naturally great at mm -hmm. if you're inspired enough I think you can uh, master something enough to enjoy the process for yourself on the other hand <laughs> <laughs> we also need uh, there are some people who uh, are just so inspired to, want to would love to be able to do something, but also people who have an appreciation. It's so important to also have people on the other end to appreciate it. Yeah, right. You know. Right. Um, now, when we're done here, when I'm driving home, I process this whole conversation, and it's like I get a lot out of just processing these conversations where people just get honest and talk their truth, it helps me see things clearer, you know, in general. And it's just a win-win on every level. But that's part of my process. You know, my journey has taken me where it's taken me. And for me to stop trying to be the director, you know, and just go where you're supposed to go, 
that in itself is an accomplishment for me because I always thought you have to have a course and stay your course and you know so, I, I just so you're to, judging yourself instead of living your life <laughs> yes but that you know that's yeah. a result of conditioning right and or, or sometimes when you're young you just misinterpret a message that might be a proper message but you're young and you just hear it differently and you know whatever or it's not a good message that or, you've yeah. gotten. No, I'm saying even if it, it is a good yeah. message sometimes I receive it wrong I'm just saying you know but yes right. sometimes the message is wrong too absolutely but you know eventually you get to a point where you are where you are and what are you going to do like we you know what's the next step like it's it, everything that have happened that when when you were saying before about your, your process too I was thinking of a, yeah, you have so this true. grand plan and something like life's going to happen man you know and <laughs> it's going to upset the apple cart sometimes you know yeah. no matter what we think but at least you know I mean I think the important part is to be out there yes uh, living life fully and you know exploring as much as we can doing as much as we can right. making a difference where we can right and um, being out on the court so to speak yeah right yep I want to get back to this really quick too this is um, your third you said of the father-daughter series right yeah I want you to just maybe if you could talk a little more about how defining this process was for you I mean to, to take this risk and, and go out there and express yourself this right. way um, probably I think maybe one of the things that led me to the father-daughter series let me just say briefly was when I had to do a self-portrait uh, for one of my drawing classes I think it was um, and I for some reason I was panicked about that mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine wanting to figure out how to do a portrait of myself I don't know for some reason I was just Stuck. horrified yeah um, what I was gonna say about myself um, so I took my clothes off sat down in front of the mirror and you know started to learn how um, how t I, I learned how timid I was and you know I was a bit fake always being the happy person and yeah. the, you know trying to you know say the best thing about anybody and just um, put on that happy face all the time mm -hmm. um, so I had to look deeper and realize I wasn't that happy and life was a struggle so I ended up doing um, a large charcoal drawing with charcoal powder and erasure because um, I felt like I didn't exist or I didn't want to show up <laughs> um, there was this fear of showing up somehow and um, so then I went on to do um, another um, paint and, that, and, and then trying to find out wh where that came from you know and going back to my past and you know so you opened up a can of worms once you actually dads you, yeah you were terrified to do this self-portrait but then when you I didn't would, want to face what, right. was, what I really felt but then when you did you opened up like yeah, Pandora's it was painful, box but it was therapeutic it was the yeah. beginning of a, a journey of of my uh, you know but, but what I'm saying journey, is it, it opened up more than you even thought yes because it you know goes back to you know some yeah. of the basics in your childhood at least for me mm -hmm. So then I realized that I, you know, that I was trapped really with uh, my early relationship with my dad and then also my stepdad. But at that time, um, it was the deepest was with my dad. So trying to you know express that um, in a painting on canvas was challenging, but it was in the process that I discovered you know how trapped I was mm -hmm. and how interconnected and entwined uh, we often are with our relationships our, our early childhood relationships are, are really important in terms of you know how we view the world yeah so if we don't figure yeah. that out and at least you know get some freedom from it yeah you know you could be really stuck right so in in this um, my dad is kind of because I didn't really grow up with him after the age of uh, five or six 
um, but obviously a powerful, you know, relationship in my life. So he's kind of there, but he's not there, and he's a dark figure for me because it Shadowy. was dark, <laughs> uh, without getting into specifics. Mm -hmm. But um, and then there's one shadow. Um, so that one shadow uh, of of just me. So feeling uh, kind of alone with that because I couldn't resolve the re this this relationship by myself, but I was felt kind of stuck with that, and yet and yet he had such a hold on me. So he's not even there, like that's your shadow behind him. So he's literally right. not there. Right. That's. <laughs> I mean, he's there, but he's not there. He's a shadowy figure, but. So that's um, what I mean about the depth of your message. Because I like, couldn't. That's I, really yeah. I couldn't. Yeah, get that relationship. I couldn't somehow connect with him that way. So um, anyway, and I felt like a ghost because I felt more comfortable disappearing. <laughs> you know, I, 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 was, I felt vulnerable, I guess, to be present. So, um, you know, being present was dangerous. Right, hence your love to create because you can isolate and just do your thing, like in your, you know, you're your judge. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. That's amazing. I went, I went to rehab 13 times, right? Wow. Until I had to realize it doesn't matter how much I share and divulge. It, at this point, I, I, I keep going back because of, of what I haven't shared and divulged. And that's why I'm saying that I, I, could, I find this such a brave act. It's really like everybody has to find their reason to resolve, you know, but I think, I don't know if I was just incapable or it was just the fear of, you know, I don't know. I don't really know what took so, why it took so long, but I know like there's so many people that are dead because in that journey, you, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of real stuff that happens and sometimes it's just, you know, yeah. no, no, not difference between you or somebody else and one's here and one isn't and that's just, you know, that's unfortunate, but it's real and, and the willingness to go to that extent to just not be honest with who I am, what, what my truth is. At the end of the day, it was the truth. I made it like it was climbing Mount Everest. In my head, it was. Right. But when you do it, then you finally let it go, and it's not that big a deal. Right. And to find that out, it's so free. But freeing. whatever fears come up that, that hold us back from that. And were you aware that you were saying all of this when you were painting it? or? Yeah, I was discovering it as I was painting it, kind of. Um, yeah, so it was kind of a, a, it felt like a very private kind of yeah, creation that's intimate, in a way because that's not something I usually would share with anybody because, you with know, like nobody, and you learn, right? that's you don't like talk secret. about, you don't talk about a lot yeah. of things, you don't share those right. traumatic things, nobody wants to hear about But you're putting it on canvas, you're traumatic. sharing it with the world. But I've had a lot of people relate um, to some of these father-daughter things in many different ways. Right. Um, you know, what it was for me specifically might be a little different than, right. than how someone could feel this similar way You're igniting in it their relationship in with them. slightly different experiences. Yes, yes. Um, yes. That's the beauty in what you're doing there. You're allowing, you're giving permission for somebody else to be honest, right? I mean, that's huge. I mean, you can't, that, that's huge. Yeah, and I think having that commonality with someone is, um, a lot, it, it gives some freedom. You know, it makes people feel like they're not so isolated. Um, that that's the hardest part of it is you know hiding and <clears> hiding, <throat> hiding things and feeling alone with it. You know, it's not yeah. easy to share things like that. Nobody wants to hear about. Especially those if it's things. shame based in any way. If it's shame based in any way, that really complicates it and makes it more difficult. But there's no crime in feeling ashamed or being you know feeling that shame. The crime is in holding on to it and staying in it. Right. Like that's where the, you know, like we, like they say, you know, a person's a victim until they're a volunteer. Like yeah. you can be a victim, yeah. but for how long are you gonna remain a victim? Exactly, like you gotta free yourself up. <clears throat> yeah, it's no fun to live life as a victim, right? No, but if you don't and know anything else and then people get manipulative, they know how to use well, that for them. if you can't figure out how to, how, to, how to let it go, then well, you can <laughs> stay that victim, right? Yes. but It's so, too I, bad we have to, we couldn't do it 
Too bad it takes some of us so long. Well, you know what? <laughs> to, you know, like what did they say? Youth is wasted <laughs> on the young. <laughs> I, I just, when you were talking earlier, I was thinking of Michael Phelps and like he's out there now as a spokesman for depression, you know? And you look at him and you think, what do you got to be depressed about, dude? You got like more gold medals than anyone ever. I mean, globally, you're the man. But you don't know what's ticking inside his head and his experience or anything like that. So right. for him to be open, it's really a big deal. But I, as I was thinking about that, obviously my ADD is in full gear right now. <laughs> I, I'm saying, but all those prime years, like we get to figure this shit out when we're older. But also, you know, his success, um, at some point along the way, that makes it easier. It's, it's, it, it can become an escape a little bit. You the know success? what I mean? You, you, you're trying to, um, you know, success can be a way to leave some of that stuff behind oh, yeah. in a way, or you think you're fixing it. Right. Um, well, I mean, it's therapeutic. That was two his, separate things His therapy way, was but. in the pool. Yours was on the canvas. I mean, we find our ways where we can put our shit aside and yeah. find our zone, right? The difference is that you find positive ways to do it instead of drugs and alcohol, and so many people resort to the other I went, things. I went through my, I went through my years of oh, oh, drugs okay. and, oh. and you know, yeah, the '70s. You yeah. know, I graduated in from high school in '70s, so I had to go through all that. Right. But, but you can see how tedious it is for other people that people that get lost in that. And Completely. there's a fine line with who gets out of that and who doesn't. I mean, it's just. I just feel super, fortunate. Yeah. That, blessed that I could evolve and yeah. uh, and move out beyond that and and be able to create yeah a, a life that with more joy and uh, more sharing don't you think that some people like I know musicians come across this often too um, when that detrimental behavior becomes too much they have to stop and then they really like their creativity is so intertwined with their alcohol, drugs, or whatever it is that, so then when they sober up, it's like, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna perform? And all this anxiety comes up, and it's difficult it's for many because, of them. Yeah. yeah, most of the time they're facing, everything has to fall apart before you can recreate. Right. And that's hard to let things fall apart. You know, you work so hard to- Think that, you're, that your talent is contingent on drugs and alcohol. That's, that's a heavy concept, you know? Yeah, I think the drugs and alcohol help you to function, too, yeah. sometimes. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it keeps you from, it's escape and keeps you yeah. from dealing with things. Yeah, yeah, for, for me personally, it was just, I want to shut it off. I don't want to die, I just need to shut it off right now. And we just want to take that path around something. Yeah. But yeah, and then it becomes you got to go through a dependency it. <laughs> sometimes, you know, yeah. and that's when it's uh, you know. Well, that's why our people need some support. Yeah, you know, because to it, go through it instead of trying to go around the ultimately the is harder. to bring this almost full circle though, the ability to communicate when you have this type of angst going on before you resort to, you know, mind altering substances or. There's, I mean, listen, that's just one route to take. There's so many other self-destructive routes to take. Or just not dealing with personal trauma. I mean, there's just to be able to just, the answer is where we started this conversation in communication. That's really, I mean, I found that in my experience to be mm -hmm. more, as beneficial, if not more beneficial than everything else. I mean, just to be able to be completely honest. Right. You know, and not have to like appear a certain way like you know you just you can't share that with other people you know what they're gonna think of you you know like that's just defeating the whole purpose here when you get to the point where it doesn't when you can just be gut-wrenchingly honest I think you know I, I my experience is that's the breakthrough that's the difference maker you know yeah, then, and it always starts with being honest with yourself right you but know, do you think it's, it's judgment, like the fear of being judged? Are you self-conscious about yeah, what it's sure, doing to people? Yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I, I always wanted to be accepted, you know? It was like, you know, became a people pleaser just because um, that's what, uh, I don't know, I always learned that that's how I could be the good person. It's like, you know, yeah. just always... Um, Doing what people expected of you, and um, 
you know. Do you think that you're able to show your own personal diversity, like the, the different sides to you, through your art? I'm, I mean, it's I'm a much, much safer way to do, to do that. that, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there Talk was a, there was a time where you know it was like yeah, I didn't I never had anything negative to say. It was always I'd always be arguing for somebody on somebody's behalf, um, and I guess I saw the world that way, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, you know, just getting angry with somebody for the first time. That, that, that was something I just didn't do, I guess, easily, you mm -hmm. know? Anger was a dangerous thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I felt like, you know, that anger to me seemed like, what was coming out of me seemed like I was this horrible, I, I, had, I had, it appeared much worse than it probably was when I expressed that anger. But right. I learned to get more comfortable with just expressing myself and mm -hmm. being able to say no and um, being honest. Yeah, but yeah. I think also if it, you know, if it's something that you've hid for so long too. It's just easier to it, keep it, hidden. It's, it's, it's harder to yes. all of a sudden yes. um, yeah. share something you never, it's like a grudge though, right? The longer you hold the grudge, the easier it is to keep holding it. Yeah. And the harder it is to let go of. It's like too much invested. I'm just gonna continue to hate you. <laughs> just easier. You know, you do it you you do it partly because you you almost have to do it do it. Uh, I feel like it's like I'm not something's missing if I'm not right. able to create and right. and express myself. So So is this gallery your answer? Because it affords you so much more diversity in your in your art, like being able to teach, being able to show, being able to maybe let other people show their stuff, or well, whatever you do is running a business. I guess the, I guess the gallery has been part of my process. It's certainly um, teaching as I started to get more students and realized, oh, if I if I have a few more students, I can have my own space. I could afford yeah. to pay for a space. So it's. Um, it's, um, that's work for me. Um, I could probably put more time into painting just for myself if I were not teaching, but for me, the teaching also is, it gives me perspective, mm -hmm. and um, I enjoy sharing, and um, I know the joy I get when I'm in process, or right. just the satisfaction, not always just joy, because uh, it is also a lot of work, but there's a real satisfaction that comes out of it, and so and I see that with with students. It's um, it's very therapeutic, and it's uh, again feeds the soul. It's meditative. It's um, it you learn about yourself. Um, you you get to create your own little theater, your own music, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, with your painting and what you want to say. Uh, so I get a lot of satisfaction out of teaching, and I feel, I feel fortunate that I'm able to uh, do that, have a gallery to show. I also love showing um, some local emerging artists' work also. I get tired of just looking at my own work. Um, I have an appreciation for a lot of different kinds of art. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to do a little of that as well. So um, yeah, so I've, I feel very fortunate. Do you ever feel as a teacher that you make that kind of impact on a particular student? Like, like you've, you're, you're, you're getting through, like you're... I guess I think of it more, again, um, I don't think of it like about me so much. Yeah. I, I think of it more um, when students are coming to class and say, you know, just saying how much they uh, they love being here and painting, yeah. um, and and I see them evolving with their work, and and I see how much joy it gives them. Um, that how, that how is satisfying. Is that? Yeah. that is really satisfying. Yeah, yeah. It's again, it's almost it's inspiring them, uh, but also facilitating. Um, you know their ability to communicate through, um, through the arts. Right. And it's so many. You know, I do get the satisfaction of people saying how much 
Yeah. They get the, out of it. Is that the most important thing that you could receive from that, you know, from that process of teaching? Yeah, I mean, it's not a matter of like um, having every student come out with a great painting every time, but mm -hmm. it's, um, it's an evolutionary process for them also. But if, if they're able to engage and, um, and get excited about learning new things and, 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 and they're evolving in terms of uh, finding what they want to say with their style, that's very satisfying, yeah. And then they can take that and whether they continue to paint with me or not, at a certain point, they have the ability to do that for themselves anytime, anywhere. Right. Uh, and some of them find that they do like coming back because there's something sometimes about um, painting with a group uh, of, of artists and having a set time set aside for yourself. Right. Uh, a routine. It, it, sometimes it's hard for people to cut that time out of, carve yep. the time out and be consistent about it. So, you know, it's important to keep your mitts in it. Um, and I think the classes and the regular schedule for some people really helps them to do that. Right. So do you think it's become a cooperative? You're around other artists and a community. Oh, it's... You know, it's, it's like a co-op of artists and it, that just adds to the process. It's stimulating. Yeah. It's stimulating to um, feed off other artists a little bit. Uh, communicate. The, you know, the, there's a lot in common with the process. Um, and I mean, it, it's almost similar to, um, you know, when I was in art school and would get to every show I could see or mm -hmm. just absorbing, going to the library and finding books. I, I discovered um, artists I really related to, like Egon Schiel and um, um, uh, Kathy Kalwitz, uh, so many, Edward uh, Took, Edward Munch, um, it just... I'm shaking my head, you know I've never heard these names, right? <laughs> there's so many, um, there's just so many, uh, yeah. George O'Keefe, you know? That, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, but, but all that is stimulating. Yeah. You know, seeing other work, it's like, it's, it's like watching a play or, right. or a great movie, there's a message there. Yeah. That's a communication we can evolve and um, connect with each other through the arts. I always am fascinated though with that Hemingway. I mean, is there a greater like known, you know, you think of American writers, I mean, it's the first name that comes to many people's minds. Tortured, I mean, there's so many of them. Oh, what was the other guy, Salinger? I mean, these guys are legends and have written masterpieces, but would I want to change places with them? Not no, so much. It's a hard, yeah. You know, but you wonder how you can do something so profound. Sometimes I guess it could just be the torture that drives you to just, you know, say whatever it is you got to say. But people are, you know, well, a Salinger, I mean, I guess uh, not everybody, not everybody received his stuff so uh, positively. But, you know, sometimes the message is okay. And there's a lot of depth to be learned. But I just, I'm fascinated with that behind the scenes uh, sides of people who we get this glorified uh, picture of who we think, you know, who they want us to think they are. But then you realize what's going on behind it. It's just so, so and sad. It's a powerful message through their, through their art. Yeah. All forms of, of creativity um, is often so much pain is what drives it. It's true, true. Yeah. But also, you see the ones like yourself, you find your peace through that. Again, with, like retrospectively, when you think back, that your work has become so much better due to the darkness that you had to come through. It, it you know, makes you more full and... Now that I've come through some of those difficult things, I like to think it's made me a better person, um, uh, a little more evolved. Uh, I can yeah. really empathize. Mm -hmm. um, I can... Um, it's given me better survival skills uh, and, and be able to thrive more. Um, yeah, I mean, as hard as it was, um, yeah, if you can evolve, uh, I think it can, 
Yeah, you, 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 you just can empathize more with other people, other situations, and um, still have lots of hope. Yeah. <laughs> and no. that even through my landscapes now, you know, they're more peaceful. Um, but there's often, you can, you can find all those forms of expression, I think, in, in uh, the light and atmosphere of a landscape, the mood of a time of day. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm enjoying that, yeah. that part of the process. Yeah. It's taken all of this time for me to understand and appreciate like what is my purpose and what am I gonna do? What is good to find something to drive me, to literally have a mission. And I found this little this little girl why? Because of my experience and my what I self inflicted. You know, sure there were reasons why I did what I did, but still I did it. When somebody's a true victim, like you're born with a condition that's just gonna like terminally be with you, you know, throughout, right? And to watch a spirit in a child, I mean, fight and just, and laugh and do, you know, you, my heart breaks for her on, in, in certain things. And then it, um, I'm in awe. Gives you a whole nother perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. and then there's another family um, in Maryland that I'm featuring as well. And it's a, a husband and wife and two boys and, and they're 15, and the younger one will be 14, you know, real soon. So they're like a little over a year apart, and they're like these young alpha males. Their father's a football coach in high school, high school football coach, and they're like, that's, they wanna play football for their father. They have EDS wow. like, like Sophia. They're not playing contact football. Right. You know, and they found their other ways, but the relationship that I see between the father and these boys, I get like goosebumps when I tell you because I see what I wanted. If I could go back, I just see this, and I, I tell them both. I tell the kids, and I, I tell them, I go, let me just tell you, man, I'm coming from a different place, man. <laughs> but I, I, I know how they look up to you, and that's how I, I looked at my, and then things just went, they went a different direction, but not any, like, circumstance I would blame it more on than even myself or my father, but we, I, I have to own responsibility in it, but you can just see where things can go and what possibilities yes. are, and how they, these, both of these guys have found creative outlets to supplant what their original dream would have been, right? There would be nothing like actually playing ball for their dad, you know, and, and be, you know, and, um, and the mother has this as well, to see the fire. How can you not see possibility? Uh, so it, it's bringing out a creative thing in me, and yeah. from my darkness, I get this. I, I wouldn't see it yeah. the way I see it. I wouldn't have the level of admiration for what they have to deal with. This is no, there's no choice. This isn't like you go to rehab and get better. Right. You know, you go get surgery, and you come out, and you get ready for the next surgery. That's what it is. And whatever you can do, it's like the dash. You ever hear that poem, the dash? When you see a tombstone, you see the year oh, you were yes. born. Yeah. It's, the, it's about the dash. That's your life. And it's yeah. what you do in, in those intervals of surgeries for these people. The girl in three years, I was telling you, 80 surgeries. Now, and still and out there. Still, spirit. Uh, they can't just... be quit because the minute there's any kind of quit, you know, it's kind of over. And so when I see this, I'm just like, it's, it's mind-blowing. But... Like, this all happens because I get out of the way. Just get out of the way and stop trying to, you know, live this life I was conditioned to live. And just because there's so much more. And, get out and, of your and, own way. <laughs> it's still, that's so such a process. True. And as an artist, isn't that the main thing to let yourself flow? I mean, you know, we stop ourselves. It's true. Some people are really good at getting out of the way and letting it Good flow for, them. So for some people like yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> they right. make it You're look right. easy but yeah when I see people like that that's why I admire them so much when I somebody can get on a stage and just captivate an entire arena just like what a gift yeah like you know to be that good and to have people want to hear what you got to say that they'll pay for it and how many nights I've been at performances where they were so profound I can clearly remember saying I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I don't care where. I, yeah. This is wow. That's you know. I, to me, 
that's why I find it magical. Like, just because there's like that spiritual moment. I don't know, you know, it's, it's spiritual might be a heavy word. But we need those moments. Yeah. It's so important, yeah. But you get that through art, don't you think? I think so. I think, uh, I've, I always make the analogy uh, that all art is like music. Yeah. Um, of, of all the mediums, for some reason, music feels like a word that, um, a medium that kind of can embody all the arts. Uh, and without that, you know, I mean, that's been with us for a long time. Yeah. And the arts are the arts are so important. I think. The cavemen would to shit give us into some... inside caves. They were like, hey, "Come on, put something on that wall." Some hope. <laughs> <laughs> you beat a drum over there, Junior. While I'm I'm painting on the wall here. Right. Um, is there any particular musician that you get the most stimulation from, the most incentive from, that you listen to, that you get inspiration from? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> a couple at the I mean, top of your head, maybe? Of course, the Beatles are fabulous. John Lennon always had such a, they always had such amazing, uh, what they had to say was also always right. really, really good and something you could relate to. And um, John was so inspirational in terms of his message of peace. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I like, I just like so many. Okay. Stevie Wonder, I like uh, blues, I like, Whatever jazz, kind of mood. Stefan Grappelli and and Grappelli and Reinhardt, the the French jazz musicians. Yeah. Um, there's just so many. And I, you know, my husband's a total opera fan, so he turned me on to opera quite a few years ago, and 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 I love that too. Do you know what they're saying? I know the story. You have to get to know the story. Yeah. I always wished, uh, you know. Some of it I can with French, but the, but um, the Italian, you know, it's similar to um, Spanish, but not quite the same. So I can get a little bit of it, but you, you know, you're gonna know the story, um, and then as they sing, you, yeah, you can understand it. But music has a way of getting into you and just, you know, it's a great form yeah, of expression. Yeah, it transcends. And, Betsy, I really I can't thank you enough. This has been so good. You're just so revealing i mean this is great you just put it out there well, fascinating you're you're easy to talk to scott <laughs> <laughs> and um, you have a lot to share yourself so thank you it's a pleasure where can people find you how can people contact you if they want to come and take classes from you can your galleries here in rhinebeck new york we're here um in the courtyard what we call the courtyard in rhinebeck rhinebeck is a small community but a, a delightful one very so cool. um, yeah, we're right on the right off Main Street in this little courtyard, and um, and we have classes here at the gallery. And so I have three, or four classes a week. I have a Zoom class. Um, there are three hour classes, in person classes, and one Zoom class a week. Um, and you can find us. Uh, go to my website www.betsyjackarusso.com and everything is there paintings classes um, different shows that we've had you can see right. some of the artists that we've represented right yeah. you have to check this out because if you want to learn you want to learn from the best i suggest anybody that's interested in um learning how to create or just expanding your creation the betsy jack Russo gallery is where you want to do that so again, thank you, Betsy, so thank much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you so Pleasure. much. And if you like what you saw and appreciate this interview, please subscribe to the channel On the Roof with Scott. Peace. <laughs>